Hey guys, it's Mather here once again, and uh, today I've got a D2 video. I wasn't really planning on making a video for D2 while playing it, because um, nothing too crazy is happening. I've made videos in the past and didn't think there'd be anything for me to do here. But I do actually want to share my lightning sorcerers, uh, given that this thing with the current setup is actually a really good, uh, strong farmer for all of hell. And uh, we're talking... Um, Terra Zones, Chaos Sanctuary, we're talking some real good stuff because you can do a Sunder Charm, you can do Crescent Moon, and then all of a sudden you're actually pretty damn good against all the Lightning Immunes, and it's a strong enough character without a huge investment to um, just farm the game and have lots of MF and actually have a good time farming everything. So I do want to kind of show the character a bit, um, just how it plays, um, but and then go over how it actually is, but for the duration of the actual... Um, little clips here. I actually want to talk about the loot hunt in D2 and how they got it so right. Or at least it feels like they got it so right. So I've been playing this game for like, you know, 20 years, 25 years since it first came out. And uh, pretty much since day one, you've been compelled by the item hunt, the loot. Because um, in, you know, modern RPGs, right, everyone's like, oh, the end game sucks. Oh, you know, we need end game. The, this end game could be better, etc. This game obviously does not have much end game. It's like you go through normal nightmare hell in the campaign, and then that's it. You just play the campaign, right? And it doesn't, by modern standards, say end game like there, there's supposed to be this distinct feeling of some separate sort of end game or some shit but the end game is the hell that you go through uh the campaign and now with terror zones as well that are a uh, zone that rotate every hour and uh, match the eye level of your character basically a little bit higher you could consider that kind of end game as well but previously you know for like 20 years the end game was farm bale, farm cows, farm Mephisto, that's it. Like a hundred thousand runs and then people would be like, yeah, nice end game, buddy. All you're doing is farming the same boss over and over. And yet it still felt pretty fucking good. And logging back in these days um, onto a new ladder that started two weeks ago, no changes whatsoever. I've actually got sucked back in and I'm just fucking loving this item hunt and the um, loot hunt, the grind the end game it's been a lot of fun again and i'm like borderline addicted i just want to do more and more and um, i'm even playing a bit in the evenings as well to get a bit more magic find in so why is that what is happening here that um is so good and so right in this loot hunt and how did they get it right just recently um there was some article on the d4 or the diablo reddit i think about how rod was saying uh, Diablo 4, Rod Ferguson was saying that they wanted to kind of like recreate the loot hunt or the grind from D2 and D4. And that was kind of what they were going for with Uber Uniques to begin with. And that fell flat because it was just super rare. And that's pretty much it. And that's mostly the comparison I wanted to talk about and what D2 does right compared to what the D4 um, tried to do, but just did it wrong. So in D2, what you've got is everything can be good. I think that's the core principle of why this shit feels good. Uniques are great. There's some really cool uniques out there and finding uniques is terrific. And that's a big part of the loot hunt, right? You find some uniques sometimes off of bosses specifically and you will um, have a great time finding that unique and have a very special moment finding the unique that you really want. Likewise with runes, there's a lot of runes out there and finding the higher end runes is a huge dopamine hit, a huge drop. But there's so much potential for loot across the board that you never really feel like you're only ever chasing one item, you're only ever just looking for one item. Everything you find has potential. Almost everything you find, you know, obviously some bases aren't particularly good. Um, some bases and some rares or magics can't ever really be anything, but almost everything has some kind of potential and it feels good just looking at like everything on the ground with a scope of possibility. So we're talking white items have a purpose in this game. White items can become really good bases. They can become the ideal, the perfect thing for your rune word. Uh, we're talking gray items, which are superiors. Um, they can all of a sudden become even better bases for your rune words, and they are highly prized among the community. We're talking ethereal items can 
in some cases be extremely desirable, in some cases be extremely undesirable. Um, and that adds an extra huge element as well. They are items that um, either increase the defense or attack of a certain um, item by 50%, I think it is, and um, then they can't be repaired. Um, they're rarer, and sometimes it's a really good thing, sometimes it's a really bad thing. We're talking blues. The game does not have a huge list of affixes. It does not have um, giant sort of, you know, a thousand to strength sort of things. It just has little affixes, and that means that in some cases, just a one or two stat item with the right one or two stats can be very valuable to a character and very um, desirable as well. So in many cases, you are checking blues as well, especially if you know enough about this game, you know the possibility of almost every single item. Um, you will be checking blues, you will be checking rares, and you will sometimes find the right thing for your character, sometimes find um, an actual upgrade from this shit, instead of just um, getting a set of gear together and then calling it a day. You will be finding stuff that you might want to trade to other people, and that's a big part of it as well. So lots of stuff for other characters, lots of stuff is universal, so you will be also finding stuff that um, can go on all your characters. It's not just like barb specific. There's only like a few really strictly class items in this game. Everything else has a lot of overlap. It's whether or not it's right for the character or for the class you might be playing or might be rolling next. And then of course you come across uniques. There's lots of different tiers of them. There's, you know, normal nightmare hell ones. You can even upgrade uniques, which is a really cool feature as well. So a normal um, unique can be upgraded. Uh, to an exceptional base, and then to an elite base, and uh, of course, set items. Set items are not hugely overpowered. Usually they do some kind of niche stuff. They can be just leveling ones, or they can be um, an end game set, and uh, it's not usually the best thing possible, but it can be a real nice starting thing, or it can have a specific niche use. All of that combined, and holy shit, you are just actually out there looking for so much stuff. Yes, there is some of the most rarest items in the game. There's Zod Runes, there's Crown of Ages, there's Tyrael's Might, and maybe if you want one of those, um, you will take a while to get them. It might take you years, as Rod Ferguson had said, and wanted to replicate with the Shaco in D4. But the point is that you're never really just looking for that, and you're never really just finding um, or trying to find that. On the way, you are finding so much stuff that keeps you going, and you never really know what you're going to get when you do a run of Mephisto, when you do a cow run. But you are expecting something to happen. You are expecting to ID some stuff, you are expecting to find some cool shit, and have that little spike of, oh shit, haven't seen one of these before, or, oh shit, I could probably trade that for a little bit of something. Like, it's not about that next zone to be created so you can go farm it. It's not about in introducing a new boss. It's about finding stuff from the content you already have, and that content feels so much more meaningful. Like, I can go out and farm cows for a whole bunch more, or farm some uh, Mephisto for a whole bunch more, because it's the loot that's important, and uh, what I'm kind of doing to get it doesn't really fucking matter too much if that makes sense. Like, you can kind of shut your brain off and just do some Chaos Sanctuaries for a while, um, because who knows what's gonna happen? Like, you're just killing a bunch of different mobs. Yeah, there's some dynamic spawns of, like, elites and all that, and that keeps you a bit engaged. But then, ooh, what's Diablo gonna drop? It's a pretty exciting moment every single time, and um, you never really know, and uh, it, it just has the right kind of drop rate of all this kind of different cool stuff that something typically is gonna happen within an hour or two of grinding, uh, some pretty cool shit even, and that'll keep you going. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, the whole trade thing is a really big thing, like being able to actually have this sort of economy that's not just a static thing as well, like it changes It's as, as the ladder goes on, and it's like a bartering system. I feel like just gold really does take things away, um, like one set currency does take things away from what you might be building as an empire with um, runes, with orbs um, in PoE, uh, runes in D2. Um, that sort of thing feels a bit different, feels a bit um, more interesting to be um, amassing your empire through sort of means of barter with other users. I don't know how to explain that. 
right? Anyway, um, I think that's enough talk about D2 and why its loot system is so good and how it just makes sense. You're always looking for something and so many things are useful and the loot is just kind of cool. And um, in a lot of cases, uniques are very unique and they're also very usable from an early game perspective too. You can be finding stuff that's good for leveling. You can be finding stuff that's um, early on good and ends up being a really good item forever. Like an SOJ, Stone of Jordan, at level 29 can be a very end game item. Likewise with some other uniques, some other set items. So all that together, just pretty much still the best loot system I've encountered in um, any game, I'd say. PoE is a terrific loot system as well, but I mean, it's a modern one and it's a huge one as well. And it's got its own thing, but for finding items and for the dopamine hit of finding items, I'm not sure D2 has really ever had a competitor for me. Um, but yeah, PoE is pretty close. It just doesn't have the same feel. It's got its own different thing and it's got a fuck ton of content for you to engage in and a fuck ton of builds. And that's more why I play PoE. The builds, the you know making of builds, the experimenting of skills and all that. Whereas D2... The main reason I play is it feels okay to kill mobs, but then it feels super good to hunt for loot. So anyway, with that, let me uh, just show you real quick how my sorceress is put together. So as always, the two guides are not very in-depth. There's not that much to really do. Uh, it's pretty, it kind of builds itself. You just need a few certain items and like spec a few things, right? Um, level 90, zap, sorceress, um, res a little bit low, but you know, they're okay for what they are. And uh, I just went with lightning all the way. So right from level one, level to charged bolt into lightning. Once you get chain lightning, you start pumping points into that and um, then lightning mastery. And then you just get the synergies for the skills. So the main two skills we're using are chain lightning and lightning. And uh, you get the synergies for them, you know, so the maximum charge bolt. Uh, and then we're trying to max out Nova as we go. Pick up teleport, use thunderstorm as well. One point in warmth one point frozen armor and then um you get as much strength and as much dex as you need the rest goes vitality you can instead do like an energy shield setup which is pretty popular as well go full energy uh energy regen potentially with some warmth if you really want um and then go more of a mana base instead of a life base setup i'm just going doing a pure life base setup and that works perfectly fine now I'm using a three-piece towels set. If you can't get the three-piece towels set, um, you know, anything else will work fine too. Like a Scalders, you can do a Viper Magi. That'll be easier to hit um, some cast speed breakpoints. But the real game changer is a Crescent Moon uh, combined with a um, Sunder Charm. So Sunder Charm breaks the lightning immunity, but all it does, all these Sunder Charms do, which are new for Terra Zones, is they take the immunity, which is 100% immune to your lightning, and set it to 95 instead. So you do still absolutely fuck all damage to the enemy, unless you have some form of negative resist to that enemy. So that's where the 35 to enemy lightning resist comes in, and as you can imagine, from 95 down to well, 60 is pretty freaking insane. So that's why we can do lightning immunes very well with this build. Uh, and on top of that, it's very good for other things like bosses that have good um, resists. So it's a bit of a game changer. You will notice your damage go up drastically, though with this kind of setup, I currently can't get uh, the next tier of um, teleport breakpoint and um, lightning car speed breakpoints. So it's not quite as speedy, but it is far more effective. You can have like an Oculus and Spirit in your offhand if you'd rather, and then teleport around everywhere quite a bit faster. But this is the thing that's going to do a lot of damage for you when you're um, actually, you know, killing bosses and um, terror zones and lightning immunes. Aside from that, farmed up our own Shaco took a good while. I used an ethereal one until it uh, until I found the new one, and it still didn't break that ethereal one. I did have to change my gameplay quite drastically to try and not get hit as much, but eventually found a real one. Um, so pretty much all of this stuff is self-found. Um, I only actually purchased a Hellfire Torch because I don't have a character for Ubers, so I just used some of the runes that I've been finding and stuff um, to purchase a torch and uh it was an unid pally torch and then i traded it for a sork torch so this is where we're at the rest of the stuff is solo self-found and um yeah trading's great trading's a bit complicated in this game though um but finding stuff is also very satisfying very doable and very rewarding so the rest of this stuff is just like magic find 
um, and um, a Gades and an Nihilus. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Um, but the thing you I, I wanted to kind of get out there is Crescent Moon. Uh, very strong thing, especially combined with a Sunder Charm. And then the Merc is currently wearing an Ethereal Dura's Shell. You want some Life Leech on him somewhere, so Crown Thieves. And then an Ethereal Insight Colossus Valge. I was using him for like some DPS, um, especially with the Might Aura. So he was helping me out. But at this stage, I don't really need his help very much. I am far more um, relying on my own damage. So you could instead do like a Holy Freeze. Uh, just for a bit of quality of life or even a defiance. His damage doesn't matter that much to me anymore, whereas before it was helping. Uh, once I got this Crescent Moon on, I only did it at like level 86 or so. Um, it was a bit of a game changer. So, yep, there it is. That's the entire basically um, guide. Also got a Call to Arms. Um, you know, if you can get one of those, that will help you sustain. I only got this one last level. So um, at level 89 is basically when I put this thing on. Um, yeah. There it is. D2, been a lot of fun. I'm still grinding. I'm still loving it. I don't care if people are watching or not. It's just fun to play at the moment for me. And um, I probably will make another character. And then um, I'll be heading off to TwitchCon next week and I'll be gone for like a week. But hopefully this video is fun and a little bit insightful as to why I think the D2 loot system is what it is in the ARPG scheme of things. Um, so thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.